Sliders are one of those things that are probably used a little bit more in VR than you're probably aware. For example, being able to load a gun in VR requires you to typically be able to slide back a single piece of that gun so you can actually chamber that round. Or for example, in a puzzle based game where maybe you need to slide some piece into a wall, that is something that might also require some kind of version of a slider. So it's something that is used a lot more often than you may be aware of. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a very simple slider that you can use in any VR game. But before we go ahead and jump into that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see even more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's go and jump right into the video. So to start out with our slider, we actually want to start by messing around with our character. And we just need to do a couple of quick little tweaks here. So I'm going to start by opening up a new folder. And actually, because before we go ahead and start working on our character, I want to create an interface that we're actually going to use in order to make all of this work. So I'm going to create a new interface here and under blueprints and then blueprint interface. I'm just gonna call this grab, um, something nice and simple. Move this right up. And we just need two functions here. I'm just gonna call one grab and a second one called release. And I wanna make sure that each of these has an input of a motion controller. Now, the way that this is going to work um, let me go ahead and rename these real quick. Motion controller. Now, the, re the way that this is going to work is we're going to have our slider set up with two different, uh, two different points within its own uh, actor. And between those two points, we're going to find the closest point to our motion controller. So we need a way to be able to both set as well as release later on. Um, our motion controller components so that way we can actually move it and we can determine where the closest point is and I'll, I'll show you that once we get close to, once we get a little bit closer to that point because it'll make a little bit more sense then um, but let's go ahead let me jump into our character now and VR pawn there we go I almost forgot to compile and save that <laughs> uh, so I went and went in and close that interface. So here in the event graph for our VR pawn, I'm gonna take our grab left and our grab right. I'm gonna disable each of these. We're not gonna use the code that's already here since we're gonna be designing our own slider here. So I'm going to take each of these and bring them down. There we go. So let's start with our pressed. Our pressed, if you followed some of my previous tutorials, a lot of this is probably going to be pretty simple for you. You're probably gonna get, you're probably pretty used to some of this. So I'm just going to do a sphere overlap actors. There we go, that's unpressed. And we're just gonna take our motion controller left and we're going to get world location. That's going to go into our sphere position. And then our sphere radius, we'll go and set to 20. Tends to be a pretty good starting value. Object type, we do need to make an object type. And if I recall, this needs to be world dynamic, uh, if I recall there. And then we don't need to worry about anything else here. If you wanna make this sphere uh, that you're gonna be using to detect the slider a little bit bigger, you can increase or decrease this radius. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to take our out actors. I'm gonna do a for each loop with break since this will be a little bit simpler. And we're just going to see if whatever it is that our current element that we're working with if it does implement interface, and we wanna see if it implements the grab interface. There we go, and I'm just going to run that through a branch in our loop. There we go. And then assuming that this is true, then that means that we've actually found the actor that we wanna grab. So I'm gonna create a variable down here, and I'm going to call this grab left actor. And actually, I want to throw this under a category just because we already have a lot of variables going on down there. It'll make things just a little bit simpler. I also forgot to make that an actor. There we go. So taking our actor, we're just going to set this grab left actor to our array element on true. And let me go ahead and reroute our nodes down here so it looks a little bit tidier. There we go. And then that means that we've now grabbed our grab left actor. Um, so I'm going to go and bring this around to break. There we go. And we could have run this in the loop as well right at the end, but I'm going to run this at the complete. I'm just going to take our grab left actor, get that. And I'm going to run the grab message right there. And you should have target as grab. That means that we're using the grab interface there. 
that's going to be uncompleted and we're just going to pass through our motion control left i'm just going to go and grab a new reference for that there we go and we just passed through our motion control left there and we're all good something i did almost forget here um before continuing on to our release is you do want to make sure you take our grab left actor and check to make sure it is valid beforehand. This is just to make sure it is possible we can complete this loop and it, we never set the grab left actor. And that was something I completely forgot about. So do make sure that you do have, that you are checking to be sure it is valid. Um, this shouldn't cause any more than, uh, than an error periodically if you, if you aren't actually grabbing something. Um, but just be aware of that because those errors can get quite annoying as well. Now moving on to our release, our release is also going to be pretty simple. We're just going to take our grab left actor, go and get that, and we're just going to run release on it. And actually, you do also want to make sure that this is valid too. Just just a good habit to get into is making sure that the that the grab left actor is valid, especially since there's always the possibility that it is not. So just make sure of that. And I'm also going to take our motion controller left, pass that through to the motion controller variable and drag all of that forward. And that is everything that we need to do for grab and release. It's nice, simple. So I'm going to copy all of this, bring it down, and we're going to use it again for our grab, right? We're just going to make a few modifications here. Go and grab, release, and then move this back just a little bit. And then here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a couple changes. We're gonna change this to motion controller right when we're getting the world location. Uh, we also want to change our motion control right here. Oh, there we go. Change that. And then we also wanna make a new variable here for our grab right actor as well. So I'm gonna create a new one, grab right actor. I'm going to also set that category as well to grab actor. There we go. And drag that forward forward there we go and then we just have to finish up right over here so again we just need to grab our motion control right here there we go i'm just gonna go and bring that down there and then we also need our grab right actor here and then finally here we just need to make sure that we're saying our grab right actor not our grab left actor so there we go true and then we bring that around to that reroute node there and bring that forward just to make sure it looks a little bit nicer and that is our entire grab setup so this will help us out once we are jumping into our slider which we're going to go ahead and do right now so i'm going to compile and save that close our vr pawn so now let's go ahead and move on to our slider our slider is going to be a little bit simple um it, it'll probably be a little bit simpler than what we did in the character so i'm going to go and start by opening up the content browser and then under content, I'm going to create a new folder here called blueprints. Go and open that up. And then I'm going to create a blueprint class type actor. And I'm just going to call this slider. Uh, it's nice, simple. It's self-explanatory. It's really the whole thing that we're doing here. <laughs> um, and now we are all ready to go here. So now we actually need to actually set up our slider. And we're going to start by making sure we have two points that our slider can move between. And I'm going to manage this by using a spline. There we go. And the reason I'm actually using a spline is because it actually gives us a nice line that we can actually use in order to see where our, our stack mesh is going to be able to move between on this slider. Now, you don't have to use a spline. You can use two scene components or static meshes or... Uh, skeletal meshes or whatever it is that you really want to use. They don't even need to be two of the exact same things. We just need two points that we can use in order to see where our static mesh or a slider is going to be able to move to. So um, I I'm going to start real quick. I'm actually going to put this next spline point a little bit further. Let's go to the last spline point. And I'm going to set that to 250 on the X. And that should be pretty good. Did that set? I think it's set. It says it's set. Let, we'll say that that's set then um, and that that went to the correct point. We can also modify this in the level if this starts acting a little bit weird or anything like that. So we should be all good. So now let's go ahead. I'm going to also add in a static mesh component. There we go. And it shouldn't matter 
what this is hooked up to. It can be hooked up to the spline, it can be hooked up to the root. Um, just so long as it isn't the root itself, you should be fine. I'm gonna set this to a 1M cube, and let me actually decrease that maybe just a little bit here in the scene. Let's maybe do like 0.25. Oh yeah, let's say 0.25. I think that should be pretty good. And that is all the setup that we need to do here, at, uh, right here at this point um, for our components. Next, let's go ahead in our class settings. We also wanna make sure that we have that grab interface added to our implemented interfaces there. So that way we have access to our grab and release here since we will need both of those. So now let's go and move on to our event graph because now we're ready to, uh, to implement all of our blueprint code. So I'm gonna start by going into our event graph and I'm gonna remove our begin play and actor begin overlap. We're not gonna be using any of these. We will be using the tick though, um, but we'll move on to that last. So I wanna start by taking our grab. I'm just gonna implement that event. I actually want that up top since that's gonna be one of the first ones we work on. And I'm also going to go ahead and implement our release here. There we go. And let's go and start with our grab. Our grab is going to be pretty simple. Really all we need to do is we need to set this to a variable that we have stored here. So I'm just going to promote this to a variable right there. And that's literally all that we have to do for our grab event. Our release, we need to add in a little bit extra. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our motion controller component. I'm going to see if this is equal to our motion controller that we are getting from our release. And the reason for this is because this is just a good way to check to make sure that the correct hand is releasing. If we grab with our left hand and we grab with our right hand and then we release with our left hand and we, we're not doing this check, then what might actually end up happening is when we release our left hand, even though it's not being held by, by our left hand anymore, then what may end up happening is our left hand will trigger that release. So this is just a good way to make sure that this is all good. So I'm gonna run this through a branch real quick feed that in, and then assuming that this is all good, then we're going to set our motion controller back to null. So our grab and release is pretty simple. So now let's go ahead and move on to our event tick here. Now this is where we're going to have the main part of our slider. This is what's actually going to make our static mesh actually slide between points. So to start out, let's go ahead and get our spline because we are going to need that here in a sec. And I want to get spline point, uh, let me see, get location at spline point, there it is. So get location at spline point, and I'm actually gonna get two of these because we're gonna need one for each of our two spline points. And I'm gonna set our first one to point index zero, our second one's going to be to point index one since we have two points and we want each. I also wanna change the, the coordinate space to world. So I'm gonna change each of those to world. And now let's go ahead and we need to actually determine what point our static mesh should actually be moving to. And we can actually do this by get closest, uh, or I'm sorry, not get, it's find closest point on segment. So in order to find this point, we will put in two points on our segment. So this is going to be each of our locations. So we're going to do start and we're going to set our point index zero location into the segment start and our point index one into segment end. These should be able to be reversed. It shouldn't cause any issue if you wanted to flip these around and put them the other way. Um, so if you really want to, you should have no problem doing that. And then I'm also going to take our motion controller component. And first I want to make sure that it is in fact valid. We always want to make sure that it is. And we're gonna to wanna to make sure that this only continues if it is. <laughs> so take our motion control component. We're going to get world location, and that is going to go into point. So what this will do is it will find what the closest points between these two points are based off of the world location of our motion controller. So if our motion controller is a little bit closer to our point index one, it will go closer to our point index one. If it's closer to our point index zero, it'll go closer to our point index zero. And if our hand is somewhere in between, then it will find somewhere in between where it thinks is the closest point there. So it, this will all simplify everything very nicely. Now, finally, I'm just gonna take our static mesh and I'm just going to set world location and our output return value is going to go into that new location. And that's going to go into is valid. So I'm going to go, so I'm going to go and compile and save that. 
close out. And now we're going to go ahead, drop the slider in, and I'm gonna bring that up. This may have actually been a little bit longer than I thought it was gonna be, but this should be good enough. I'm gonna bring that roughly right next to where we should spawn. So right about there should be good. And so this will allow for us, once we grab our, our um, stack mesh here, it should allow for us to slide anywhere between these two points. So I've gone ahead, I've dropped in the slider. So um, in the way it's set up right now, this should be as far left that it can go, uh, assuming I'm looking at this correct. It should be able to go pretty far to the right. Uh, it's actually occurred to me that this may be outside my bounds. So I don't know that I'll be able to push it all the way to the right, but there will be a place where it would have otherwise stopped on the right. So if I go and grab this, you can see it's now sliding left and right, back and forth. And no matter what I do, I can't get to move any other direction other than in this direction here horizontally. Um, if I were to, for example, rotate this slider, then I might be able to get it to go up at an angle or maybe up and down, whatever the case may be. But you can see it works just fine. If I move it all the way over here to the left, then it won't go any further than this point. This was roughly where it started at. And um, like I said, I don't think, let me see. Yeah, no, that's my wall right there. Um, so I can't get all the way to the right, but there is a point over there where if I were to bring it all the way over to the right, it would actually stop. Now, alternatively, another method you could use if you wanted to allow for it to go on for an infinite length um, there was a, th there is a change you could have done where um, rather than find closest location on, uh, in segments, you can actually find closest location on, I believe it was line. And if I recall, all that requires is a location, a direction, and it will allow for you to keep going in that direction in infinite space. Um, but yeah, so this will at the very least work for a slider. So we have a left bounce, we have a right bounce. And with that, that's how we put together a very simple slider that we can use in any VR game. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.